This is 5 on 20 News with Tammy King. And I'm Pedro Santa Cruz. First, I'd like to thank my other co-host, Rich, for allowing me to pick up his shift today. Uh, I spent a little too much money at the casino this week. So uh, coming to you live from our studio in downtown Tucson, it's January 18th. First, in local headlines. Arizona Senator John McCain asked the president to stop attacking the media in an opinion piece for the Washington Post on Tuesday. McCain's piece came hours before fellow Senator Jeff Flake spoke on the Senate floor about the president's attacks on the media. Their statements coincide with a planned fake news awards announced by Trump on Twitter two weeks ago. In the piece, McCain says that the Trump has threatened to continue his attempt to discredit the free press by bestowing fake news awards upon reporters and news outlets whose coverage he disagrees with. McLean, M McLean claims that foreign leaders are watching the president's statements whether he knows it or not, and his words are being used to accuse autocratic regimes around the world. The senator ends the piece, ends the piece by asking Trump to stop the attacks and take more active role in protecting press freedom because we all know asking nicely is the best way to get Trump to do something. You know, there's a lot of negativity on this fake news awards, but I'm up for three awards, so I say an awards award. I'm proud. The immigrant aid group, No More Deaths, accused Border Patrol agents of destroying items left in the Arizona desert, such as water bottles, to help those entering the country. The group posted a video on their Facebook page of clips showing Border Patrol agents emptying water jugs and taking blankets near Aravaca, Arizona, between 2010 and 2017. In a separate report, No More Deaths claim that agents have destroyed more than 3,500 gallon jugs of water left for immigrants crossing the border. The group called for a formal policy prohibiting the destruction of humanitarian aid supplies and to make this act a fireable offense. John Fife, co-founder of No More Deaths, said the group reached an agreement with the Border Patrol in 2014 that they would not tamper with humanitarian aid the group left at its desert camp. This mostly included jugs of water, medical supplies, and blankets. But he said the agreement fell apart last summer when the agency raided the camp while volunteers provided medical aid to four migrants who were arrested. Fife is a former minister who was active in the 1980s sanctuary movement after a flood of Central American immigrants fled a civil war. A spokesman for the U.S. Customs and Border Protection said the agency was still working on a statement and will deliver it once everyone forgets about the issue. That's an interesting strategy, don't you think? Forget about it. Both locations of Jason's Deli in Tucson were affected by a, da a data breach resulting in privacy of uh, customers' cr credit card numbers being compromised. If you are concerned that you might be one of these customers affected, check with your credit card company for any suspicious activity and contact Jason's Deli customer surface service to report the issue. Jason's Deli is offering up their famous soft serve ice cream with any reported identity theft. Uh, but just so you know, the side that dispenses the chocolate is broken, so just get the swirl and eat around the vanilla. You know, some people have described Pedro as a swirl of chocolate and vanilla as well, and I say take both flavors at once. In the recent survey conducted by the Arizona Farm Bureau Federation, the price of a dozen eggs is up by 35%. Increased prices are a direct result of a decrease in the number of hens laying in the state. The low production has Republican lawmakers concerned, and they have commissioned a study to determine if Planned Parenthood or other pro-contraception agencies have caused the decrease in hen production. They also released a statement saying they are wholeheartedly against the use of hen abortions and chicken prophylactics. Whatever your stance on the issue, Pedro Santa Cruz is concerned that the cost of his favorite Tucson breakfast, huevos rancheros, is on the rise. And in case you're wondering, also like Fruit Loops and uh, Captain Crunch. Good to know. Pima County Natural Resources, Parks and Recreation has launched a Beat Back Buffalo Grass Month, which goes until March 2nd. 
Buffel grass is an invasive non-native weed that steals water and nutrients from native vegetation, causing native vegetation to die. Buffel grass is also dangerous to local ecosystems because it increases the risk of extreme fire. During the month-long campaign, the county is asking for volunteers to help remove the grass from local areas, including A Mountain, Saguaro National Park, and Sabino Canyon. Many groups have volunteered for the project already, including a group of local stoners who have pledged to burn a shit ton of grass to help such a worthy environmental cause. Stoners are good people when you get down to it, really. Yeah. Now, in, in national and international news. A new report, NASA found that 2017 was one of the hottest years on record. 2017 surface temperatures were slightly lower than the previous year when the warmth was aided by El Nino, the Pacific weather pattern usually linked with record setting heat. But when subtracting the effect of El Nino, 2017 would be the hottest year since 1880 when temperature record began being kept. Scientists at the National um, Oceanic and At Atmospheric Administration used a different analytical method and found 2017 to be the third hottest behind 2016 and 2015. El Nino also contributed to the heat of 2015. According to both analysts, 17 of the 18 hottest years have occurred since 2001. Since the 19th century, temperatures have increased over one degree Celsius, according to both reports. In order to avoid, avoid the worst consequence of climate change, scientists say that we need to keep global temperatures under two degrees Celsius. So we're halfway to Armageddon. Raise your glasses. Cheers. Salud. Cheers. Salud. I'm not sure why people are complaining so much about hot temperatures. Why don't they just stay inside where there's air conditioning? Right. And for those of you who are wondering, El Nino means the Nino. Attorneys General in New York and Connecticut are suing the EPA for what they claim is out-of-state air pollution that affects their states. New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman made the announcement on Wednesday saying that millions of New Yorkers breathe unhealthy air due to smog pollution, mu much of which blows into New York from upwind states. Schneiderman said that the Trump administration continues to ignore its responsibilities under the Clean Air Act to reduce interstate smog pollution. He was referring to the Good Neighbor Clause of the Clean Air Act which forces the federal government to commit to tougher air quality standards in place to protect downwind states. Schneiderman first gave notice of upcoming litigation in October to EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. Pruitt reportedly used the letter to shield his mouth from breathing in pollution. Nine Park Service Advisor board members quit their posts citing concern over the Trump administration's policies regarding national parks. In a letter sent to the Interior Secretary Ryan Zink, the group said that they had been unable to meet with Zink or the Interior Department in his first year in the position. The author of the letter, Alaska Democrat Governor Tony Knowles, said that the advisor group, advisory group was supposed to meet twice a year, but he was told these meetings were suspended. He noted that previous administrations met with the board immediately. Eight of the nine members had terms ending in May and suspected the agency of trying to run out the clock of their appointments. The Interior Department didn't seem too bothered by their resignations. Interior spokeswoman Heather Swift said in a statement that the nine members had to ignore sexual assault problems at the National Park Service and supported former director Jonathan Jarvis despite ethics violations. She said that we welcome their resignations and we expect nothing less than quitting from members who found it convenient to turn a blind eye to a woman being sexually harassed at national parks and praise a man for inspiring who had been blasted for ethics and management failures. Shots fired. Swift denied that the agency was not engaging with the committee, saying the official spoke with the advisors last month. Just to recap. 
Republicans no longer care about the debt as they added 1.5 trillion in debt due to the tax reform bill and now they suddenly care about sexual harassment. Next month we'll see Democrats adopt trickle down economics and demand that Trump lock her up. Mm. S and M. United Health, the largest health issuer in the country, hmm. is expecting a 17 billion windfall from the recently passed Republican tax reform bill, according to the company's CEO. On a fourth quarter earnings call, CEO Dave Wickman told investors that the company will invest the windfall in new technology and local community-based health care initiatives. Nowhere in the call does Wickman mention giving its employees a raise or to hire new, new pe people for new jobs, which was supposed to be the point of tax reform. The legislation slashed corporate tax rate in an attempt to boost wages and add new jobs in the U.S. United Healthcare made $201 billion in revenue and $10.6 billion in profit last year, according to their earnings statements. The company stopped participating in Obamacare exchanges in 2017. Wickman says that the company is urging a delay and a later a repeal of the health insurance tax, which helps fund the ACA. Ind industry groups have been pushing for a repeal of the tax. However, supporters of the ACA say that repealing the tax would eventually erode the law, which is probably the point. In the meantime, United Health and other insurers have set up a GoFundMe to help get them through these tough times. You know, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do that with my uh, gambling addiction. You probably should. Fund me. Democratic Rep Representative Ted Lieu said, and Republican Justin Amish reintroduced a bill that would curb civil asset for forfeitures for marijuana growers. The Stop Civil Asset Forfeiture Funding for Marijuana Sus Suppression Act <laughs> would restrict civil asset forfeiture funds from being used by the Drug Enforcement Agency Domestic Cannabis Eradication Suppression Program. The bill prohibits the transfer of property that would be used for cannabis eradication from a federal or state agency. A press release from the pair also says that the bill would ensure that precious federal resources are not wasted on marijuana eradication. Lou and Amish introduced a similar bill in 2015 that went nowhere. However, since then, eight sta states have legalized recreational marijuana and a number of states have now medical marijuana programs. Lou said that the federal government has a responsibility to spend taxpayer money wisely. Instead, AG Jeff Sessions would rather waste federal dollars by attacking marijuana, which has been legalized for medical and recreational use in the majority of the states in the U.S. Amish said that civil asset for forfeiture is an unconstitutional practice whereby the government takes people's property without due process. Who would have thought that weed would bring Democrats and Republicans together? Maybe Jeff Sessions just needs to calm down and smoke a big fat joint. Probably. You know, if the government is truly ser serious about eradicating marijuana, I know a few people who are very good at that, so maybe they should get them on the case. President Trump released his long-awaited and confusing fake news awards last night. Two weeks ago, the president promised on Twitter that he would be naming the best of the worst of the mainstream me news media. And for some reason, he delivered, no, he delivered on his promise. Last night, on the site GOP.com, a blog was released list listing in instances of the mainstream media making potentially, potential mistakes related to the Trump presidency. These included claiming that the president threw a bucket of fish food into a pool beside ja Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the claim that Trump took down a statue of Martin Luther King Jr. bust. You know, the important stuff. In the case of the MLK statue, it was actually tweeted out by reporter Zeke Miller, but wasn't reported by any news networks. I guess news is subject subjective now. 
It's worth noting that media outlets had already issued retractions following the incidents, and one journalist involved was even suspended for the mistakes. But it looks like the GOP should have taken a little extra time putting together aw the awards because their website looks like a mid-2000s blog. The pictures on the site were warped and squeezed, evidently because the website creator couldn't take the time to find more high-resolution photos. Some of the winners included Thomas Friedman of the New York Times, who took the number one spot and who is actually an opinion writer who doesn't actually report news. The Washington Post, Time Magazine, and of course the president's favorite, CNN, also won at, at the Fake News Awards. The losers, of course, were all of us. So Pedro didn't win, apparently. Sorry, Pedro.